Howdy. Let's now take a look at a slightly more complicated uh, line problem. So, taking a look at this one, it says that an object of mass m is placed at the point x equals a on a horizontal table um, and given, at t equals zero, a velocity of magnitude v1 to the right. So your initial velocity is going to be that v1. The coefficient of friction between the table and the object is mu and no algebra, just how would you solve this? Set up the equations to be able to solve it. And so in part A, where will the object stop if mu has a constant value of mu naught? Okay, well first off, I need to do my network, so for part A, our network integral from R1 to R2 of f dotted with dr is equal to mv squared over 2 at r2 minus mv squared over 2 at r1. Now what we're going to call is we're going to call r1 my x equals a and then at some x equals x this is what I'm solving for. This I do not know. Okay, It says where will it stop? Okay, Now because I know it comes to a stop we know that my final velocity is going to be zero, and your initial velocity was some v1. This will be a negative mv1 squared over 2. And now that you have that, integrate all your forces. And so, what will happen is, uh, for part A still, our network, which, by the way, was negative m v1 squared over 2 is equal to the integral for some from some x equals a to x equals x and that x is what I'm looking for of my forces acting on this block and and at this point my only force acting on the block is friction in the x direction right if I did a quick free body diagram we've got mg I've got n and I've got mu times n. But because friction is pointed in the opposite direction of the positive direction, they said positive x is to the right. Friction is pointed to the left. This is a negative mu mg. And my mu is a constant value mu naught. And so at this point, all you need to do is integrate this. And so negative mv1 squared over 2 is equal to negative mu naught mg and then I'd plug in the top x minus plug in the bottom let's go ahead and actually just I'll integrate this for y'all this will be negative mu naught mg x from a to x and so it's a minus mu naught mg x minus a negative mu naught mg a and so therefore what will get you full credit, because it said no algebra, is negative mv1 squared over 2 is equal to that negative mu naught mgx plus mu naught mga. No algebra? Fine. Don't do it. And that's it for part A. Now let's take a look at part B. Part B, where is it going to stop? if mu is a function of x given by the following. So you do the exact same thing, nothing is different. The only thing that's a little bit different is, well, your force, because your mu is a little bit different. And so we're still going to say that our network is equal to negative m v1 squared over 2, and this will be the integral from a to x. And what I'm going to do is uh, distribute the mg into this. So this will be a negative mu naught mg, and then minus a mu naught mg x over l, and I'm going to integrate this with respect to x. And so I'm going to do the same thing as last time, I'm just a little out of room here. I'm going to go ahead and integrate this, plug in the x, minus plug in the a, but notice when I plug in the a that will turn into a positive because minus a negative is, well, a positive. And so your final answer in this situation is you'll say negative mv1 squared over 2 is equal to negative 
mu naught mg x. Here, integrating this one, this will be a minus mu naught mg x squared over 2L. And then when I plug in A, those are all just going to turn into pluses. So we're going to go plus mu naught mg A plus mu naught mg A squared over 2L. Because like I said, integrating this is just negative mu naught mg x minus mu naught mg x squared over 2L from A to x. And so let's plug in the top minus plug in the bottom. But now let's get a little dicey. It's a little dicey here with part C. In part C, where will the object stop if mu is now a function of time? Energy doesn't take time into account. Energy takes your change in velocity. It takes your change in position. It does not take time into account. So if you have any force that is a function of time on this exam, you will not use conservation of energy. You're going to be using kinematics. Okay. Now the first thing I need to do is a quick free body diagram to this. And what I've got is that your uh, free body diagram. Here we have the mg, the n, uh, the mu times n is really it. And so, and your acceleration in this case is actually going to be pointed to the left as well. Acceleration is pointed to the left because you're decelerating. Okay, so the A and the friction are actually going to be pointed in the same direction. And so when I do sum of forces in the x direction, it's m times A, that's just going to be mu mg, I get that A is mu times g, which if your mu is given by the following function, I have that my acceleration is equal to, uh, we'll have a mu naught plus mu naught t over s times g, which is mu naught g plus mu naught g t over s. And what we have is we have an acceleration with respect to time. And so if I want to see where will it stop, first I need to find out when the velocity is zero. And once I find out when the velocity is zero, then I plug that time into my position and I can find out where. To find velocity, that's the integral of your acceleration, which is going to be mu naught gt plus mu naught gt squared over 2s plus some initial velocity, because I know at zero, these are just going to go to zero, and that initial velocity they gave me to be v1. Okay? Now, i got to find out where, or sorry, not, well, i got to find out where, but before I can find out where, i got to find out when the velocity is zero. When is the velocity zero? I'm going to say that zero is equal to mu naught g, and what we'll do is we'll call this t star. And what t star represents is going to be the time at which it's equal to zero. Call it whatever you want, but it's going to be really hard to solve. Well, it's not really hard. Well, it is kind of messy, because you'd have to do quadratic formula, but he said no algebra. So just state what you would do. So we're going to call this mu naught g t star plus mu naught g t squared, t star squared, over 2s plus v1. And what I would just state here is let them know you know what to do. At this place, you would solve for t star. And so this is the time at which your velocity is zero. Now that we know when our velocity is zero, in order to figure out where, you'd integrate one more time to find position your x of t, which would be the integral of your velocity, is equal to mu naught g t squared over 2 plus mu naught g t cubed over 6s, 3, t cubed over 6s plus 
v1 t plus some initial position, and we know that we're starting at x equals a. So v x equals a. Therefore, your final answer, the way that I would write this, is when, where do you come to a stop? That's at x of t star, which uh, is mu naught g t star squared over 2 plus mu naught g t star cubed over 6s plus v1 t star plus a. Remembering t star is some constant value at which your velocity is zero. So make sure they know that. And so the big thing I really need y'all to take away from this problem is if your forces change with respect to position, you're going to use conservation of energy and work. However, if your forces are going to be a function of time, which I've seen that before, make sure you're using kinematics. One small change I want to make here for part C is I got kind of excited getting into the integration for kinematics. Notice how I pointed acceleration to the left, which is fine. And so because friction is pointed to the left. So as long as you identify that A is to the left, this is all good. The only tiny change that I would make is that notice how it said the velocity as a magnitude V1 pointed to the right. And so therefore, if I have acceleration going to the left, and v1 is pointed to the right, this would actually be a minus v1. Okay, so it would be a minus v1, minus v1t, minus that v1t star. Okay, so just make sure that all of your directions are, um, are aligned.